Well, 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 welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I am Watsu K99, and what I want to do today is talk about my predictions for the 2022 Jets rookies. The rookies are reporting this week to Florham Park, the brand new 2022 season. You know, it, it feels imminent now because there's actually things happening, even though the season doesn't really get started for another two months. At least there's action, and we don't have to talk about girlfriends and weight problems and all of these just lovely tabloid topics. We can actually talk about players and what they're doing uh, in camp, so I am very excited about it. So let's go down from the bottom of the draft and work our way towards the top. And uh, by the way, this will be in written form on my sports blog, nysportswickermedia.blogspot.com. Link will be in the description. So as far as Michael Clements goes, defensive end, our cult hero, the king of the press conference, the one who basically told Rich Cimini to uh, shove it in his first press conference. I can't wait for the next presser that he gets to have. I think he is going to emerge as no more than a rotational piece this year, but I do believe he will make the Jets roster. I can't imagine, unless he's just completely incompetent, I can't imagine that the Jets are going to give up on a fourth-round draft pick uh, the year that he was drafted. It's, it's just very hard for me to envision that. I do think he is going to have to at least be on par with uh, Bryce Huff, Vinnie Curry. I think those three are probably batting, battling for maybe maybe two spots on this roster. So I think as long as Clemens is on level with those two players, he will ultimately win out. So, and the other, there is one other thing that's interesting. Uh, Aaron Wycott, I listened to uh, an interview with him today. And he's really giving the indication that the Jets uh, also see Clemens as potentially a defensive tackle. He could rotate inside. I don't know how I feel about a 263-pounder playing defensive tackle in today's NFL. Uh, but Clemens is a pass rusher. He is not a run stopper. So he sounds like he would just be the next Solomon Thomas or you know Nathan or who, you, you name the guy. But you know Thomas Rankins, you know just a defensive tackle who is more adept at stopping. The, rushing the pass and stopping the run. But if I had to give a number, I'll say he does get a little time towards the end of the season. I'll give him 14 tackles for the year and two sacks. I do think he will have those one or two moments, and uh, we won't be able to shut up when he gets those sacks. So moving our way up, Max Mitchell. This is the player that, if all goes well, he is on the roster, and he is on the inactive list for all 17 games this season. That's about all that I want. I don't want to see him on the field. If anything, he could emerge as the team's third tackle, but if he is getting playing time, we know what that means. Mekhi Becton or George Fan are injured. The Jets cannot afford to have that happen. So my hope is next year, realistically, 2023, he becomes the third tackle. Hopefully uh, Becton and Fan both stay around. Uh, but, yeah, he by next year he should be unseating Chuma Doga or Connor McDermott at the tackle position. On to Jeremy Ruckert, the Long Island legend, our brand new tight end. So I'm really glad that the Jets don't have to use him as a starting tight end. You know, with past regimes, they would have drafted this kid. They would have brought in some run-of-the-mill veteran, a Jeff Cumberland level of tight end, right? And they would have competed for the starting job. Ruckert has no pressure on him. He can learn at his own pace. He can go in on, on special plays when he can be that receiving tight end. You know, because his blocking still has uh, a lot of refining that's needed. You know, Jeremy Ruckert never really learned to block until he was at Ohio State. They taught him how to get really down into three-point stance and how to explode out of it. You know, prior to that, he was basically a wide receiver. So I guess what I like the most about Ruckert is that his hands are very secure. I don't know if he'll have a lot of targets, but I do believe he will take advantage of the targets that he does get. I'm going to go 24 catches. 198 yards, and I'm going to say three touchdowns. I think we're going to see some good flashes from Jeremy Ruckert. Now, this is going to be the interesting one. Brees Hall, I've probably been as unsettled about Brees Hall as anybody uh, who is a, a Jet fan, a Jet content provider, whatever phrase you want to use. Uh, the huge usage in Iowa State worries me. Uh, he had over 800 touches last year. Uh, I don't know if he quite has the breakaway speed for the NFL that I want. Uh, and can he break tackles? I know that when he's in space, he has great vision. And he is going to be counting on this offensive line to create space for him. If he doesn't have the space, he's going to be basically Le'Veon Bell. Now, hey, if we have Le'Veon Bell in his prime, well, sign me up. I would be thrilled with that. 
But for Le'Veon Bell to become the player he was with Pittsburgh, he needed great tight ends. He needed a great offensive line. He had that. So Brees Hall is going to have to really have that in order to thrive in the league. I do think he's going to get a lot of uses. He will have a lot of early and he will have a good amount of early impact. I think it'll be a solid rookie year. I'm going to say 868 yards uh, rushing, which is it's a little more than 50 per game. It sounds great, but it's really it's 50 a game. Okay. I'll say he gets a few passes, say 320 uh, yards receiving. That'll score six total touchdowns. So maybe I'm underselling Brees Hall a little bit. I'm just a little bit uneasy about uh, basically saying this guy is going to be Jonathan Taylor, which is what a lot of people are saying. Jermaine Johnson. Let's go into the first round and talk about J.J., as uh, Coach Sala said. So there's no doubt the Jets want to have what basically amounts to eight starters at defensive line. J.J., I think, will play about 40 to 50% of the snaps. You know, the thing with J.J., he's actually better right now against the run than he is rushing the passer. I think Johnson's, one of his biggest strengths will help be to shore up the run defense. And it doesn't seem normal that a 4-3 defensive end would do that, but that's one of his uh, biggest strengths. So, I mean, last year he missed only three tackles uh, in the run game last year while he made 44. So that's a made tackle rate. He only missed 6.4% of his tackle opportunities, which is about in the 84 percentile among college rushers. At the end of the year, I'm going to say 41 tackles, forced one fumble. He'll force one, you know, he'll force one fumble, and I'll say, I'm going to say four sacks. Um, I got to see that ability that he has to get to the quarterback quickly. He does get quite a few coverage sacks. Those are going to be a little bit harder to come by in the NFL. So that's my thoughts on Jermaine Johnson. Now on to wide receiver Garrett Wilson. I think he will uh, get his share of reps as the year goes on. Early on, I think the starter should be Corey Davis and Elijah Moore, but Wilson will have his moments on the field. I think it's going to take a little time to get him going uh, as well, as opposed to maybe a Brees Hall who will be getting a lot of usage immediately. Uh, but I think... Michael Floor will figure out over time how to get him in space, how to use him properly. You know, Wilson's very good at getting yards after the catch. He's very good at getting separation from opposing defensive backs. And I think we'll see that as the year goes on. So let's not expect Jamar Chase, but we can expect a very good wide receiver in the beginning of his first year with that ceiling going straight up. So I'm going to go with 61 catches for the season. Uh, 529 yards and five touchdowns for Garrett Wilson. Again, there's one football. There's a lot of weapons on this team. Not everybody can get 1,000 yards. So let's just, you got to keep that in mind. And on to Sauce Gardner, cornerback. Maybe the toughest position to transition is cornerback in the NFL outside of quarterback. Now, I think uh, early on, he's not facing the best uh, quarterback slate in the NFL. You have uh, probably Mitch Trubisky. Uh, Lamar Jackson doesn't have a whole lot of uh, good wide receivers to throw through. God only knows who Cleveland will be using. Will it be Jacoby Brissett? Baker's obviously gone, and Deshaun Watson, you figure, would be suspended. Although, in this day and age, you never know. You know, the NFL will give Calvin Ridley, they'll suspend him a year for gambling. You know, they'll probably give Deshaun Watson a bonus just because he was able to settle the lawsuits. That's just the way of the world now. So I think there'll be some quarterbacks. Uh, you know, you have to get to Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen, Russell Wilson. Uh, where uh, Joe Burrow, where he will be tested early on. He'll give up his share of catches. He might give up a touchdown or two. But I think as the second half emerges, uh, teams are going to realize this is not a guy we want to pick on. So for me, I'm going to go – here's the thing. You, you know, Sauce Gardner's had three interceptions in each of his college seasons. So what the heck, let's stay on this three train. We're going to stay on the three line. And I'm going to say three interceptions for Sauce Gardner, 16 passes defended, which, uh, if he was playing last year, would put him in the top 10 in the NFL for passes defended. So that's my thoughts on the drafted Jets players. But you know what? I'm going to give you a bonus. That's right. You get some bonus content. I'm going to talk about one undrafted free agent, and that is DQ Thomas, the linebacker from uh, Middle Tennessee State. Uh, he finished his college run with 309 tackles, uh, 53 tackles for a loss, 20 and a half sacks, two interceptions, Seven passes defended and eight forced fumbles. The guy knows how to produce. This is a linebacking core which sorely needs it. All it's going to take, one injury to a C.J. Mosley or a Quincy Williams, 
and the Jets are going to be desperate at linebacker. They are already thin as a pool cue at linebacker to begin with. One of those two guys goes down, they are in trouble. And if that happens, I would like to see DQ get the spot. I think they may have to sneak him on the practice squad to start, but I believe he's going to, by the second half of the season, he will start to get some meaningful reps at linebacker. I think this is going to be uh, one of the better defensive, uh, actually one of the better undrafted free agents that the Jets have uh, picked up in recent years. Maybe one of the best since uh, David Harrison. You know, not Isaiah Dunn didn't exactly sell himself very well to uh, the Jets brass last year, but I think DQ Thomas uh, might be able to do something. So that's my thoughts on the Jets rookies. What are your predictions for uh, the Jets rookies? Uh, what do you agree with me on? Am I nuts at certain points uh, on certain players? Let me know. I'd love to hear what you think. And I'll see you back here from the Wicker Chair with more New York Sports and Wicker Media. Ciao, guys.